Changing out the front ventilated discs and pads on a Skoda Fabia Mark 1 1.9 pump juice engined variant 2002-07. I haven't used this car for a while so it would be interesting to see what condition the brakes are in. You want to find uh, level firm ground, take it out of gear and put the handbrake on. Oh and we need to straighten the front wheel so I'll just turn it back on again. Chuck the back wheels. Once the wheel's straight, now we can jack up the car. Get your jack out of the spare wheel well and locate the arrow on the sill. And then you want to put your jack on the seam directly in line with this. Mine's a little bit rusty, which I'll have to sort out sometime. And is the main reason why it's not on the road at the moment. Once you've got the jack in place, then you want to be loosening all the wheel nuts off. I usually start with the locking wheel nut which has always got a special adapter that you should find in your spare wheel well. Mine's got little serrated combs inside that are different widths which correspond to the bolt. So you've just got to move it round until it slots on. So you just want to loosen the bolt, not take it off. Do that with all the other ones. Before we're jacking up the car. Now put your safety axle stand underneath the solid part of the engine. Our subframe, I put mine under this uh, bushing, it's always been alright for me. It's pretty solid. You might want to put it under the subframe itself. Just don't put it on the body. Then I take a bit of weight off the ordinary jack, put it onto the axle stand, so I use both. Take all the wheel nuts out. Take the wheel off. If it's stuck on, just tap it with your foot. Ooh, watch out! Ah, and place the wheel underneath the body of the car for extra security. It's a good idea to put something down on the ground to protect yourself while you're doing the brakes. I like to use my Auntie Gertie's old rug. Or was it Auntie Mildred's? And I also have a little plastic seat or a little table to use. Comes in handy. And it's a good idea to use these little throwaway gloves and eye protection. Here's the brake set up and as you can see mine's quite rusty and scored on the disc. If we look on the caliper, on, marked on the side is the name of the caliper, FS3, which are quite common across a, a lot of bag cars. Here's a little window to look at the pad thickness and the bleed nipple, which you may want to use if you want to bleed out the front lines. You can see I haven't used this car for a while with all the cobwebs and the discs are ventilated here. When you're ordering new parts for the brakes, not only is it important to get the right pads for the calipers, but it's very useful to measure the diameter of the discs as these can vary quite a bit. These are 256 millimeters in diameter. And as these are relatively new, they still have around 22 millimeter thickness, which is what I think the quote when they're new. And if you look at the pads here, although corroded, you can see they're quite thick, but the discs themselves have got quite heavy score marks near the edge and have begun to corrode quite heavily on the perimeter, which is often the case, as the pads are always designed to be very close to the edge but never over the edge. And if we look in the window, you can see that the thickness of the pad on the inside pad is also thick and fairly new, although, again, corroded. As I'll be bleeding the lines out when I've finished, it's a good idea to put some penetrating fluid on the nipple threads to let that soak in for when I want to use it. And the first thing I usually do is just tap round the caliper to loosen everything, loosen all the rust off and loosen the pads on the discs so you can easily get them off. Don't go mental with this, just tap it reasonably firmly, but not overly. Right, that should be enough. The calipers are held in place by two 7mm guide pins, which you need to take out. They're housed here on the back of the caliper, or the inside, behind these little rubber caps that you need to just prise off with your thumb or forefinger.
They're usually held in quite tight these, so you initially need quite a bit of force just to sort of break or crack them loose and then they should easily come out. You can use a hammer if you need to do. To take them out it's a good tip to angle the allen key in the actual recess so it grips onto the guide pin at the side and enables you to just gently ease it out. They should be nice and smooth. If they're not then they'll need cleaning up quite a bit. As the guide pins are essential for the caliper to float laterally to allow the pads to engage and just as importantly release. The pins are made of a stainless material but they can still corrode uh, and pit so if you can't get yours smooth then you need to replace them. To take the caliper off you need a, a large old flat bladed screwdriver put it in the top of the caliper here against the carrier and ease the caliper and pads away from the disc like so. The old pads will just pull out, or you can use a screwdriver. And just knock the other one out. Then get a suitable breathing mask, protect yourself from all the dust that you're going to create. I'm going to clean on top of the piston here, being careful not to damage the rubber bellows. and then clean all inside the caliper itself. When you finish cleaning the caliper up, just hang it up out of the way. Don't let it dangle, because that'll put too much pressure on the flexible hose and could damage it. But they're quite robust, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. And if you've got one that leaks, then you must replace it. To take the disc off, it's fairly simple. You just need to unscrew the little grub screw, which if it's been put in wrong and it's too tight, you'll have trouble with. In which case, you can just knock it with a hammer a little bit as you turn it, or use an impact driver. That usually does the trick. They're only a, really a, a locating screw, so there shouldn't be much torque on it at all. Take it out and the disc should come off. If you find the disc won't come off, it'll be because it's uh, fused to the hub with corrosion, in which case all you can do is just knock it off around the perimeter with a hammer. Once you've got the disc off, you can get access to the carrier, which you need to clean up on the guides, both top and bottom. Do most of it with a wire brush. And you can knock all the loose rust off with an old screwdriver, scrape it off. I need some coarse emery paper to sand it off. It's imperative that these are really cleaned up well, as they help keep the pads in the right position. When you've cleaned it all up and you're happy with it, then we want to move on to the hub flange and to clean all that up because the wheels often stick to it, especially when they're alloy, and the hub steel. Clean all the corrosion up. And then what I like to do is put some copperese where the wheel meets the surface and especially around the sort of centre part. They often get stuck there, but keep away from the threads anywhere where the wheel meets the hub really as they tend to corrode if they've been left on a long time but not too much, maybe I've overdone that a little bit I'll just wipe it off a bit later and then you want to put some copperies along the guides both bottom and top before you put the new disc on Right, before I do that, I'm going to have my lunch. Oh yes, I do love some noodles.
and a right good cup of Yorkshire tea. As you can see, the old discs have got quite severe score marks around the outside, around the perimeter on the outside, and on the inside they're a bit rough as well, all quite rusty, mainly because the car hasn't been used, so it would clean up to a certain extent, but I'm going to put new ones on anyway. So here's the discs all bagged up. First thing I'm going to do is check the size. Yep, it's exactly the same diameter. Take it out of the bag. What new discs come with is a protective oil film all over the disc, so you need to remove that. And you can do that quite easily with brake cleaner. And a rag. Let that dry. You could use soapy water, but it's more time consuming and it'll take a little bit longer to dry. Turning to the guide pins, I'm just going to clean these up with some fine emery paper. When the disc's nice and dry and ready to put on, line up the hole for the grub screw, locate the disc and hold it with one hand and then put the grub screw in and don't over tighten it. And I put a bit of copper ease on this little screw as it only locates the disc. It's the actual wheel bolts that hold the disc onto the hub. Now we just want to clean out the rubber guides for the guide pins with some brake cleaner. I use a, a rag wrapped around an old drill bit for this. Once you've done that you've got to push back the piston into the cylinder. You can probably do this with your thumb and forefinger if you're very strong but you can use either a, a wind back tool or what I use is an old G clamp and a bit of wood. Before you push the piston back take off the cap to the brake fluid reservoir as you need to allow enough space for the, any fluid that you push back. If you find it's completely full then you need a turkey baster to take some out just to leave enough space. Put the wood on the face of the piston and gently wind back the piston. It should go in nice and gently. If it doesn't and it jams then you'll probably have to strip it down and ease it off or you'll have to buy a new piston. Mine's gone down nicely. Just got to fit the pads now. These are quite cheap pads which won't offer as good a break-in performance so I'd recommend something of better quality. But even the cheap ones are still serviceable because they have to meet a minimum standard for safety and performance. These have got the wear limiter cable so I'll, I haven't got that system on my car so I'll just cut that one off. And on these pads the clips are a different size. with the smaller clip on the pads fitting onto the outer part of the caliper. So you want to fit the larger clip pad onto the piston, just push it in. And then the outer one, you just slot it in from the side. Put a bit more copper ease on the moving parts. When you fit the caliper you need to get the bottom outer lug on the caliper over the carrier on the inside and the pad on the outside. And if you get any grease on the actual pad then you need to just rough that off with some emery paper so it's nice and clean and dry. And the same goes for the disc. Once that's in place you just push the whole caliper towards the disc. 
Oh, and I've just realised I haven't put any copper ease on the top and bottom edge of the caliper on the underside of the pad wings, just here. And the underside, which is a good idea to do as well. Once you've cleaned up the guide pins, you want to lubricate them. And I'd recommend this uh, Permitex, which is very good. But any other suitable grease will be fine. It needs to resist high temperatures and water ingress. Put plenty of that on the shaft. And reinsert them into the rubber guides. Locate the guide pin threads by jiggling the caliper in place. You push it towards the disc and tighten home firmly to the correct torque. Now go inside the car and pump the brakes a few times to build up pressure. Make sure they work. Recheck the level in the fluid reservoir and top up if necessary. And it's also a good idea to bleed out the lines on the when you've done the front brakes to remove any excess air. And to do this you might want to check out my other video on how to bleed out the brake system. I'll put a link in the description for that. You just uh, attach a small pipe into a receptacle. Get somebody to pump on the brakes and hold pressure. Open the valve up, let a little bit of fluid and air out. when it's clear tighten it back up and you might have to repeat this until it's completely clear Replace the rubber cap back on the nipple end and don't forget to fit the plastic caps on the rubber guide pin sleeves which is just what I seem to have done here. Refit the wheel, put all the bolts in Take the axle stand out and lower the car to the ground and retighten the road wheels to the correct torque and the job's done or so I thought got a bit of a slow puncture there better pump it up I can go and enjoy a nice cup of tea now and don't forget to put the cap back on the reservoir and check the brake fluid levels correct which I should have done earlier actually don't forget to clean any remaining fluid on the reservoir replace my too complicated to repair cover back on the engine or vanity cover however way you want to look at it and as always thank you for watching a big thank you for everyone that's subscribed to the channel we really appreciate that and if you haven't already subscribed consider subscribing. Please share the videos wherever you can and hit that like button as hard as you can. Hit the bell icon to receive every video that I produce and I'll see you guys on the next video.